In this video I'll be making a camera phone lathe crocodile. Um, you're right, that does sound a little bit odd now I'm saying it out loud. But stay with me here. Basically it wants to be something coming out from the wall. Not a real crocodile obviously, but something that can hold a camera phone. So I can focus in and record the action on the lathe. And something that has a bit of articulation. The recordings I've done in the past have all been from this flibbly lamp. Any vibration from the lathe would amplify up the lamp and cause terrible wobble. It was really awkward to position anyway. I'm sure you agree we want something more lathe crocodile worthy. This is our fateful beginning. Attempt to dismantle this old camp bed that I've been given that was all broken and mouldy and smelled greatly of fungus. Like many upcycling projects, it was replete with illusory possibilities and very present practical concerns. Namely, the rivets holding these staves together, which were absolute fiddly bits to get off. The angle grinder sort of helped, I think it was mainly mental fortitude it gave me. Drilling them out worked quite a bit better. Quite interesting frames. What can I use these for? There's got to be something good. Leave us a comment. Well, yeah, you raise a good point. The flathead screws pretty much are evil. Well, that turned out to be quite the removal effort. Davy things, there's a load more of them. One slightly thicker. beach chair. Let's clean up these staves and see what we're dealing with here. So I'm looking at them as they're going through and I have to say I'm not liking what I see. One or two of them seem to be oak but the others are all just pine. Congealing that little disappointment in my heart I pushed the camera off the edge. So we've got two that look a bit like oak. Um, I honestly thought we were in for a bit more of a treat there. That one has got some kind of spouting. All in all, I feel a bit cheated. Unfortunately, I got my I got to quite liking the way the light looked against the dark, and I was quite excited about how this was going to end up looking. Um, but now it turns out these are all just quite light-coloured, piney pieces not too different from the beach not that kind of color which i suppose i should have known really i'm a mistake um but it's unfortunately left me wanting to find some other bits okay we're scraping the end of the lot here this is what i found dark bits that's actually more orange that's a nice dark bit let's have a go at straightening these scraps out and squaring them up on the table saw with those bits squared up let's start the wall mount this is just a scrap of offcut from a bandsaw box I made a while ago. So the idea is that man needs that bit we just cut that against the wall. Once it's been roughly squared, I just use the piece that's going to fit into it itself to mark off where I want to cut. Cutting, roughing out the majority of that on the bandsaw. We can then use the sled on the table saw to tidy it up. So there's a major problem with the outer feed table that came with this saw in that if you put a sled on like this, oh, can't go any further and the blade hasn't actually reached the fence. Immersively, it's only two Allen bolts required. That should take this tape off.
I know, I know. Sorry about the mess. We'll get that in order. See what we do. So that's on the wall. This is coming back. I don't want it that long though. Sorry, if we're on the UK. Yeah, you're good. In the end, I think I want to go with this funny curved bit that's quite cool. Time for a bit of drilling. Just as soon as the usual drill pass mess is cleaned up, that is. I don't know what it is with this thing, it just seems to breed drill bits. They like grow on it. Okay, so I'm drilling the holes for the pivot points now. I carefully marked and centred punched one of the stave things and I'm going to use that as a guide for all the others. And I'm just clamping the others on with a quick spring clamp. And the drill bit was just big enough to go through those long beach bits that are going to be in the middle. And then just drilling the wall mount. After cutting it's time to turn that horrible burr into something a bit more like this which will be able to find its way through the pivot points we just drilled. With the pins in, I can then disc sand the nice curves on the end of the arms. I'm quite a fan of the commercially available abrasive cleaning stick things. I've tried using old silicone and various other compounds, but nothing seems to work quite as well and it really helps keep burning down and the abrasive working. Sorry about that, sorry about that. I know I'm thinking how can I let it be so messy here. Well, hey. Piece of four. Bit of a gap there. And how about this? It's a bit too big. Remember these? Let's see. Maybe three. Been over to the lathe to check that it reaches out far enough, which is cool, it does. Um, let's talk about the base a minute, this mounting bracket. So, this is all one piece, well I say one piece, it's, it's, it's from an old bandsaw box or something, some scrap I had. But the grain is all going in this direction on all the pieces including this top and this piece or that bottom and that top the grains all going that way so what I need to do that makes for a very weak joint here and here assuming I'm going to screw in somewhere through there what I want to do is reinforce this joint and try and prevent that weakness here. Um, so what I'm going to do is cut some slots in the back. That fits perfectly. Obviously I'm trimming down. Where did that even come from? I've been having to think about how the end's going to go and what I really want is to be able to swivel so this is going to be able to swivel side to side like that what I really need is something to rotate that way and that way to get me all the angles of movement Looking in the scraps box, I've got a old titanium broken 
walking stick thing someone gave me and a bit of old gas pipe. Let's see if we can't make some kind of mechanism out of those. This is sped up, but these carbide inserts are really good at fast speeds, heavy cuts with no coolant and getting nice tightly coiled chips just how you want. Okay, machinist look away now. I'm gonna try using anvil. Bit like a reamer. That's what we've got. We need to weld that up. This titanium <laughs> shaft is going to go into there and this is going to sort of pivot round on it. And same deal that side. Titanium shaft's going to be fixed on there, going into there, so that'll be able to move like that. I think I've probably got enough weld on. So I drilled a hole to mount the titanium shaft to join onto that bit and then I was just making the clamp mechanism when I drilled a bit too far and that just didn't work so I had to start over with that. Hello, I'm Mr. Alligator. <laughs> titanium. That was very light. It was actually a bit tough to cut, but mainly because I didn't have the right pitch hacksaw. Let's go back to the wall mounting bracket thing. Just trim off where we put those splines on. I used the chisel on that side, but then for the end grains of the splines, I got lazy and took it over to the disc sander. And then we're just going to need some mounting holes to screw it onto the wall. I'm going for four of those. So we're nearly ready to mount it up. This is what happens when you can't find your countersinking bit. I know it's ridiculous, but it actually does a reasonable job. Let's mount this bad boy already. This video got long. So the actual mounting for the camera phone will have to wait for a part two, I think. Thanks for watching. And if you've got any friends or your dad or mum or grandma or anyone who is into this kind of stuff, then please do share the video with them.